Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. This is Winter Nam 2019. We're in the Fender booth. Duff McKagan's here. Great to see you. I'm here. It's great seeing you, too. So you've got a new signature bass that Fender announced here at the show. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's really kind of overwhelming. Being you know, um, just growing up and and learning to play musical instruments to a certain extent <laughs> as I have, uh, and then uh, forming Guns N' Roses. I was really a bass player at that point. Like this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to play guitar. I'm not going to play drums. Right. And um, you know, Fender is the the ultimate for a bass player. It's the ultimate bass you want to play. And and matriculating through Guns and and finding that that jazz special, my original one that w we eventually made a Duff signature bass. That that moment was huge for me um, because I'm a, I'm a being just being a Fender artist alone as a bass player is a cool thing. But to have your own model and now to have two right. separate uh, models, which are distinct to my career now as a bass player it's been quite a while and my sounds have changed over time and and uh, the basses that I play have changed to a certain extent this is a, a nice mix of my jazz special and and uh, sort of a Getty Lee Reggie Hamilton modded uh, Fender jazz yeah so what what specifically are you doing as far as the pickups and, and the controls and things what's different here N nothing really is uh, the pickups are exactly the same okay uh, Seymour Duncan's um, this basically cancels out the, the any any sort of hum from lights and whatnot. We found that out early on, you know. Uh, you find things out as you play places, and there's lights and there's crap and there's whatnot. Um, nothing changes for me. I mean, I've always there's this obviously the pickup switch. I always um, rubber cement this, rather my tech McBob. So I, I never switch. I just they're both on. Yeah. Uh, but you get the option here. This is, you know, for bass players that are, have to do way more versatile, versatile things than I do, that stuff will come into play. For me, I'm boss of all at all times, on ten. Uh, but with the Walking Papers, Walking Papers, a band that I toured a record with, which was a lot more um, bass and drums driven band, I guess. Uh, rhythmic. I played with Barrett Martin, who's a drummer, uh, kind of steeped in. African rhythms, Cuban rhythms. Uh, the bass playing was had to, the bass itself had to take up a, a larger part than I was accustomed to, to playing. Right. Um, drop D, so I, had, I I got the Reggie Hamilton mod and I had the the D tuner, um, which sometimes you would use in a song and come back to standard, or you, you know you don't want to change basses all the time during a set. So I could just play one set for or one bass for a whole set of walking papers. And I got used to that that Getty Lee jazz I was playing. It took up more space in the room as well. Um, with guns and most you know, the rock stuff that I do, bass has got to take up a specific uh, space in a band. And I think that's important as a bass player to know as well, like what your space is. Don't just go get some rig and, and it'd be loud, and, and, and the, you, you know, your guitar player's got a Marshall stack, and the other guitar player's got a Marshall stack, and the drummer's got a bunch of drums, and you're all taking up all the space. Um, it's what I've learned. It's really important. I think I learned it early on, watching, like, the class. I got to see some great bands, so noticing the space um, of those 70s bands. And um, uh, so my point was, this space takes up a bit more space with walking papers. We needed that. It called for that. So... I use this in the gun set now too. With the right now for the Chinese democracy songs we're playing, that needs a bit more bass space in them. Uh, I do dr I drop D, a couple different tunings, uh, but this bass uh, I've added into my repertoire, and it's and it's sweet as sweet as hell. Nice. So so it's got a bit more extended bottom end. Then you, you have a little more room to drop that in and not not compete. Heavier. It's a little heavier of a bass. So if, you know if you're playing a three and a half hour set like I do, it's probably not the most healthy thing for, for me to be introducing to my own uh, back, to be honest. But it, it it tends to be a little heavier. Yeah. Um, our sound guy out front of house sound guy has to change my settings for me when I go to this bass in our set. But it gives them something to do. <laughs> you gotta keep them busy, right? Yeah, exactly. keep them keep them working out there. He's pretty busy. Yeah, I imagine he yeah, is. He's like, really? You're gonna add something else in? Okay. Um, so well, that's awesome, man. Congratulations on uh, a signature bass number two. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's that's really cool. Not many people get that. 
I, I realize that, and I, I really am um, kind of stunned and, and honored for sure and uh, excited about it. That's great. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for spending time with us here at Winter Nam. It's a thank pleasure you. to meet you. All right, you too. And have a great show. You right. We'll catch you later. All right. All right. And thank you for joining me here at Winter Nam 2019. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.